Let's get more on the market action with Julian Emanuel, BTIG Managing Director and Chief Equity and Derivative Strategist. Julian, always good to see you. Great um, to be here. When I read that you want to own consumer staples, that you upgraded staples, I thought, wow, Julian's really going defensive here. What's behind this call? <laughs> So if you look at it, this is for months now, and I think it's part of the reason you're talking about retail, is that you've had this intense rotation in the markets. Uh, the winners became the underperformers. The underperformers started outperforming. So you recall, we were on with you in early March, where we got positive on large cap tech and growth when nobody wanted it. That worked very nicely. And here we are in May, and the market is completely obsessed, as it should be, with inflation, pricing power, and supply chain management. So what we did was we looked at, at uh, corporate transcripts so far during the earnings season and looked for the consumer staples names that have underperformed, that have good dividend yields, because we don't think the 10-year yield is running away north of 2% anytime soon, and, have, and really have been uh, lagging in an environment where they have pricing power. Pricing power is absolutely paramount now. And I think, again, what we'll look for when the retailers start reporting are the ones that are telling us they'll be able to pass on their price increases uh, at the store. Julian, it's Karen. Let me ask you, who are the ones that really do not have pricing power where you would seek to avoid that either group or names? Uh, well, so, so for us, the, the other side of the coin is this whole idea of supply chain management. And looking through the same corporate transcripts, what you see, there are a number of industrials, there are a number of technology companies, there are a, a few consumer discretionaries, that really some of the, the FANG type names, that we know are under pressure because of the supply chain issues. They tend to be price takers for their components um, and not necessarily able to pre pass along the higher prices. It's more about the fact that those stocks also have been high multiple outperformers in an environment where we think ultimately the focus on inflation, uh, the fact that yields are likely to continue rising, even if slowly, is going to refocus people on value over growth. And those are the kinds of names that you know we think are likely going to underperform uh, for the next several months at least. Hey, Julian, it's Tim. So, right, you're talking about value over growth. You're talking about rotation. And in reading your notes, you, you, you mentioned that the rotation themes seem to be much shorter lived. Can you explain that and that that's a negative? To me, uh, the sense that we've had a lot of rotation back and forth, cyclicals uh, to, to, to some of the high growths, to you know, value to growth, uh, mega cap tech, uh, et cetera, to me, suggests a lot of breadth in the market, but you seem concerned. So explain that, please. Well, so this is a, a, a long term versus short term picture, Tim. Long term, the fact that there is breadth in the market is is decided positive. The average bull market of the last hundred years is over four years in length and rallies over 150 percent. We're 13 months in. We're 90 percent off the bottom. So long term, we think there's more to go. But in the short term, when you think about it, you tend to want to be able to identify a discrete leader, whether it's sector, style, market cap, what have you. And that narrative has sort of been lost. And when we combine that with uh, what we've seen the last two weeks, with the VIX rising simultaneous to the S&P 500 rising, that has almost every single time, certainly in the last three years, been followed by a pullback. Julian, great to speak with you as always. Julian Pleasure, Emanuel thanks. of BTIG, whose price target for the S&P 500 is still 4,000 uh, by the end of the year. And so, Guy, that is, you know, roughly 190 S&P points lower from where we closed today. Do you agree with the call of, of you want to be long staples? I don't think it's unreasonable. I mean, you're looking for places where valuations sort of make sense. I mean, they're not, they haven't gotten crazy. So, and, and I got to tell you, the move in some of these semis is absolutely concerning. I mean, we'll probably talk about that again in the show. But, you know, you've had some great earnings releases out of so many of these names. And the price action has been, in a word, lousy. So maybe Julian is onto something. And he echoes a lot of things that the three people I talked about before had, so, had said as well. So, you know, I, I, I sort of like what Julian's putting down, and I sort of dig him generally, so good for him.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.